Hey, what's up guys? So what I have here is a 7x14 cargo trailer with a 6.5 foot interior that I converted into a camper. So let's go take a look inside. Starting with the front, you can see I have the main electrical area here. So I have all the main light switches. And up above here, I have some power switches for the cooler and the electricity to the bedroom and the water pump. I also have an inverter switch right here. And then in here is the electrical closet. So you can see I have a 100 amp hour battery, 100 watt solar panel on the roof with the solar controller there. And I have a 2000 watt power inverter and then the fuse box going all over the camper. Next, if we go over to the bathroom here, I just have a simple porta potty and just some lights. Future space, if I want to add a small vanity in here. And sorry, I'm trying to make sure I can get everything in shot because it's a tight space. But over here, got a pocket door and a very simple handle and latch just to keep things real simple with the design. And I have the small light here. So if we want a very dim light at nighttime. Now if I go over here to the dinette, I have the table and then dinette seats that I made in another video. I'll try to post videos I have of builds in this trailer in the description so you can watch those later. I have an escape window over here. So some blinds that open up. And it's one of these that you open from the handle so I can get fresh air from there if I want. And then up above, I have this long skinny cabinet. Up here, I store forks and other random stuff. Over here, I have the kitchenette area. So I have some drawers on the left side. Things like utensils, cooking stuff, and I have this induction cooktop that I can run off the battery. Underneath the sink here, there's a little bit of storage space, but I wanted to point out I have the gray tank right under there. So I have a valve easily reachable where I can drain it from the inside. And I have a portable AC unit with a heat pump that I use for both AC and heat. Then I have this butcher block style countertop I made similar to the table. Also have a video on that. And I got the sink here, some running water, and then a soap dispenser. And I have some cabinets up above just for extra storage, plates, bowls, all that good stuff right up there. Space for spices or other storage stuff over here. And then I have a plug back here. This is coming from the inverter. So I can put the cooktop right there if I want and use a kettle to make some coffee in the morning. Over on the other side, I have what I call my pantry. And it's just some buckets on shelves, just to keep things real simple there to store extra stuff. And then over here, I have my cooler. It's a 12 volt cooler, pulls out on drawer slides. And it's got two compartments here. So I can set different temperatures and have a fridge and freezer or two of the same. This little step that goes up here to the bed area. And in the bed area, I have this headboard I made in another video. It has a cushion on the front, and it's got some power in it for lights and charging. I have some eastern red cedar planks on the back and cedar planks on the rest of this. In the main area of the camper, they're just pine, but I wanted cedar smell, so I added that in here. And I have some suitcase storage here. It's a place to put bags and all that. And up above, I got the Max Fan exhaust fan right up there. So that about does it for the initial look around. I will have more videos more up close um, towards the end of this video so you can get a better look at some of the things I wasn't able to get in shot. But I wanted to cut in here to talk about cost because I know a lot of people probably are wondering, you know, what, what does it take to actually build something like this? So the trailer itself, it's an all aluminum trailer, seven by 14 with six and a half foot interior, also a dual axle. 
So the trailer came out to be about $10,000, kind of within that range. There's a big range on trailers depending on brand and um, if it's steel versus aluminum for the frame. I went with aluminum because I wanted something that wouldn't rust as easily. And I have a half ton truck, so I'm trying to shave weight. So, you know, something to think about if you're doing this yourself. And for the actual conversion, I tallied up as much as I possibly could. And I came up with a price of about $5,000 for everything inside here. So converting the trailer to that. And I was a little surprised. I was a little worried it was going to be way more because when you start a project like this, it really adds up once you start buying all of the amenities, buying the cooler, toilet, sink, battery, inverter, you know, everything that goes into it. It can really add up fast. Where I saved a lot of money in this build is avoiding plywood at all costs. <laughs> Obviously, I did use some plywood on cabinets. Some of that was actually left over from before, which is good. I was able to save some money with scraps, but even including the price brand new of plywood, it's still within that range of $5,000. So the reason I saved a lot of money is I used a lot of furring strips and construction lumber to make planks, like you can see behind me. And none of this is really that difficult to do. It is a lot of work, but it's more trivial maybe that's a better way to explain it you know all i did is split some boards in half and cut some tongue and grooves on them with the table saw so if you're looking to save money personally i think you can build in your own cargo trailer but obviously if you don't have the tools and the know-how you may end up needing to buy a lot of things yourself so you're not really saving a lot of money that way couple other things I learned from this that maybe will help some people if you're thinking about building a trailer yourself. My water tanks are inside. I did not want to mount them underneath the trailer for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't trust that I could get a secure enough hold to actually keep the tanks on there because they're extremely heavy <laughs> when you fill them with water. So I really wanted them inside as more of just keeping them more secure. But the other important thing, I want to camp in cold weather with everything functional, which means so long as my trailer is heated, then I can actually continue to use the water tanks, where a lot of trailers, if the tanks are mounted underneath without any kind of heating, you can't use that in cold weather. Cold weather meaning when it actually gets freezing. So I think that about does it. I believe I covered everything I wanted to, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll answer it the best I can. And following this, I'll have a bunch of videos showing you different things in the trailer more up close in case you didn't get a good enough view while I was doing the walk around. 